Well, hello friends, totally unannounced video. I'm gonna start this in about two minutes. Let me get my timer going to give you some time to collect. Okay, so two minutes starting now and I will get started. It's nothing scripted whatsoever. And if you're watching the recording, then you know to fast forward and listen to me sounding so dated to the two minute mark. Hello, three people. Hi, Andy. Glad you're here. Hey, starting in one minute and 40 seconds. And I have no idea what I'm going to say. I just know the bullet points. Totally unscripted. And we'll see what happens. I think this is going to be a great video, though. Seven people. Welcome. That's pretty quick. We're going to start in a minute and a half. 90 seconds from now, we'll get started. And you're all encouraged to participate, comment, ask questions. And if you want me to put a magnifying glass on something I'm talking about, let me know. And I will. I promise. Also... I may miss some comments, but I will go back after I'm done and make sure that I see all of them. So if I miss you in the live feed, rest assured, I check all my messages. So one more minute and we'll get started. How's it going, Andy? Nice to see you. Got a glass of wine. 45 seconds and we start. Hi, Maureen. Nice to see you. Hi, Lisa. We're starting in a little bit over 30 seconds. And please feel free to share this. And by the way, my website, TomBerkenmeyer.com. Take out the space, just like it's spelled here on social media, TomBerkenmeyer.com. I got tons of content if you happen to like this and share. And we're going to get started in about 20 seconds. Andy, so I'm your getting ready for work personal development material. Awesome. Okay, since I'm starting in 10 seconds, I need to have a clue as to what I'm going to say. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, what if you have no opportunity for yourself? You're looking out there, you know, there's things you want to do with your life. Maybe you're under debt. Who knows what's going on? Things are a mess. Things are crouching all around you. And you're like, but there's no freaking opportunity. So how am I supposed to solve these problems? Well, here's what you do, and then I'll break it down because on its face it sounds kind of vague and ambiguous, but if there's no opportunity out there, you create your own. You grow some big brass balls or some big brass ovaries, so most of you are female on here, and you create your own damn opportunities. And then you don't have to be waiting around, procrastinating, waiting for opportunity to present itself to you because procrastination is the cornerstone of all poverty. honest to God truth. So let me give you some examples because I've been there, done that. Hi, Christine. Nice to see you. And Michelle and so on. So let me give you some examples because I've been there, done that. And I've talked to a lot of people who have been there, done that as well. And I've talked to many more people who have been there and not done that. <laughs> so they're still in the same mess they were 10 years ago. But like, take me for example. I didn't see any opportunities for myself. And year after year, I kept waiting around for it. And things continued to get worse. Sound familiar just a little bit? <laughs> So here's what happened. Eventually, one day, 10 years ago, this is back in 2007, it's 2017 right now, um, I, had to, I had to begin creating my own opportunities. Uh, I was presented an opportunity, actually, that I, I had no income for, so I had to get really creative and be like, okay, what about this thing that says you need money to make money? Well, I discovered that was a lie, so don't fall into that trap. It's not even an, an opinion. The you need money to make money is a big scam. Don't fall into that. But I created 31 ways of raising money from having no money. So I proved anybody can raise money without having any money. In fact, um, some of the people that have went through that 31 ways, because I give it away for free, you can ask me for it, I'll give it to you. But some people went through that and created new ways that I didn't even think of. So there's many more ways than 31. It's just what I thought of, and I'm only one person. But I was a straight D student. I was pretty stupid. Educably retarded. I rode the short bus to school. I took all the easy classes I could in high school just so I could get out of there. I still struggled and got straight D's. And uh, special education classes and all that stuff. That was me. So um, I was pretty stupid. <laughs> and um, what else? I had an income of zero. So if you're making a minimum wage, you're doing better than I was. And by the way, I'm sitting here in my house that I paid cash for. Can you imagine not having a mortgage or rent or a house payment? That frees up about a thousand bucks a month just on its own. So, and I had no income when I started. I had an income of zero, enough 
thing. <laughs> and I was a straight D student, educably retarded. And I had no time on my hands because I was trying to go to school full time and a half and I had other adult responsibilities. So time, money, lack of skill, those are the three big ones. There's more than that out there. And you can draw parallels to others beyond the three, but those are the three big ones. So I just stick to those for examples. So many people will say to themselves that, oh, there's no, I want to do these cool things with my life, but there's no opportunity out there. I want to get out of debt, but there's no opportunity because I don't know how, I don't have the time, and I don't have the money. That's typically what people say, a combination of those things. So I was there in all three of those. And so what I started doing when I had that epiphany moment, I drew a line in the sand and I started asking myself questions. Instead of making statements and telling it how it is, keeping it how it is, I started asking questions. What can I do to have more free time? What can I do to start making money even though I have an income of zero? And so I develop 31 ways of raising money without having any and I give it away for free. I put it together in an audio file. You can go to my website, tomberkenmeyer.com, on the right column you'll see 31 ways to raise money. It's free, just grab it. And you'll probably invent other ways. So I had uh, no, t no free time, I had no income, and I had no skills to do anything, but I started to fall in love with learning. So I got involved on a learning process. And as I learned things that I knew could make a difference, I started applying what I learned. And I got my nose bloodied and things went wrong when the going got tough, I stuck with it and figured it out. When the going gets tough for most people, they quit and it's over. But bottom line is, if there's no opportunity for you to do anything, you have to create your own opportunity. And creating your own opportunity could be like what I did. I created 31 ways of raising money without having any. And eventually I learned about passive and residual income, which goes to the time problem that a lot of people have. A lot of people have no time. And they're busy making statements about how they have no time, which keeps it that way year after year after year because they're not asking questions. They're just making the statement. And they don't see an opportunity for themselves because they're too busy making statements, living where they live and not expanding at all to realize that there's solutions out there if they would just stop making stupid statements and asking great questions. Because when you ask questions, you transition from a poor, lazy mindset to a rich and creative mindset that's out there looking for solutions. So that was really the first thing, is having that switch in the brain. And so, as I learned about passive and residual money, which you should really learn about, then I started realizing, well, this is gonna solve the time problem that I have, because money doesn't solve the time problem. Money solves a money problem, but money doesn't solve a time problem unless it's a passive and residual money. So if you're making tons of money because you have a good salary job or a good hourly job, then that doesn't solve the time problem because if you stop showing up, you stop getting paid. So you're shackled to the dollar. You're a slave. You're controlled and manipulated through the, dependent, through the dependency of money to, or you cannot pay your bills. That's what it means to have a high paying salary or hourly job. It says pyramid scam. It's the most sinister pyramid scam ever devised against mankind. And what do most people want? They want a higher paying job. So they're a bigger slave, bigger shackles to the dollar. You can't escape. It doesn't solve the time problem. So what you have to do if you're interested in being a free human being and unshackling yourself, solving money problems and time problems, it's not with a job. It's not even to be an entrepreneur by itself. It's to solve money and time problems, you need passive and residual money. And if you see no opportunity for yourself to get it, then you got to create the opportunity. And if you don't even know what it is, then you have to create the opportunity to learn about it and create a learning environment where you're learning at least a little bit of something every day. Even if it's only five or ten minutes of study every day, you're going to be an expert in time a month, a year from now. That's not. When I started my personal development studies of learning, it was maybe ten pages of a book maybe 10 minutes, we'll say 10 minutes a day, after a year or two of that, I got really good at it because it was a little bit of something every day. But most people aren't willing to do that because they're gonna bitch about how they don't have opportunity. And all the while, they're not doing anything to create the opportunity for themselves. So I had the moment where I decided I need to create opportunity for myself. So I came up with 31 ways of raising money from nothing. And I learned about passive and residual money so that I could solve both money and time problems. And with my 10 minutes of personal development every day, I got the skills. And because I got the skills, I was able to solve time and money problems. And then from there, other problems too. And it doesn't even matter what the problem is. It could be anything. You can draw the parallels to, as it relates to yourself. But yes, I'll pound that 
in the pavement in your brain as much as I can. There's no opportunity out there. You're waiting around for opportunity to present itself, and maybe sometimes it will. But if you really want to take control of your life, you have to create the opportunity for yourself. If you don't, you're going to be waiting, procrastinating, and procrastination is the cornerstone of all poverty. It's stupid. It's so dumb. And you'll just live and die being controlled and manipulated through the dependency of money to pay your bills. Because big business interests need your unquestionable obedience. They need you to be waiting for opportunity to present itself. The people that uh, desire your unquestionable obedience to be controlled and manipulated through the dollar, they don't want you creating your own opportunity. Are you kidding me? That would fuck up their plans to control and manipulate you in perpetuity. Well, I say their plans that they have to control and manipulate you in perpetuity, you could totally throw a wrench in that and fuck everything up for them just simply by creating opportunity for yourself and learning about passive and residual money. And here's a big problem with you guys that are not thinking this way yet. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. But if you're not doing anything to develop passive and residual money, then this isn't my opinion. Numbers don't lie, but if you're doing nothing to develop passive and residual money for yourself, then you are currently living and dying under the most sinister pyramid scam ever devised against mankind. That is to be controlled and manipulated through the dependency of money to pay your bills and eat. Otherwise, you can't pay your bills and eat. So let that be something you draw a line in the sand with, that you're going to start doing something to develop passive and residual money. And if you don't know what it is, then your first step is to learn about what it is, study it. 10 minutes of personal development a day, you can be an expert in a year from now. And then start uh, implementing what you learn. That's what I did. It's what some people have done. Most people will not do it. And you know what most people are doing right now? They are living and dying under the control and manipulation of the dollar, or they can't eat and they can't pay their bills. 98% of the population, that's 49 out of every 50 people, before the age of 65, they are either dead or dead broke, depending on family, friends, and the federal government as the main source of their income, and they have two or more chronic diagnosed diseases. That's most people. So if you don't want to be most people the way that most people are right now at this moment in time, then simply deciding that you're going to figure shit out is going to be enough to put you in the 1 out of 50 versus 49 out of 50. Because everybody will, at least once in their life, start down that glorious, beautiful, delicious path. But when the going gets tough, they quit. When the going gets tough, the 1 out of 50 will take up learning and seeing it through and figuring stuff out. I mean, that really is a simplified formula for success. Decide what you want, tell the world, and then figure it out. When the going gets tough, figure it out. Learn, embrace it, enjoy it. And then you can create your own opportunities. Because, let's face it, bottom line, if you don't create your own opportunities, then you will be tossed around like a rag doll for the rest of your life, just twirling around in the wind. And when the wind changes directions, boom, you're going to be tossed around with it. I mean, that doesn't sound like fun. So if you're waiting for opportunity, that's your present, and that's what you have to look forward to. Waiting for opportunity, that's what you have to look forward to, is just being tossed around like a rag doll. As the tides change, the winds change, and whatever changes, you're being pushed around with it. Totally obedient to the powers that be and controlled and manipulated to the dollar to pay your bills or you can't eat. So stop waiting for opportunity and start creating your own opportunity. And if you don't know how, invest 10 minutes of time a day into your personal growth and development. At this day and age with YouTube and Google, and everything else that's out there, much of it is for free. And there's volumes upon volumes of information about anything you want to learn how to do. And if you just spend 10 minutes a day doing that every day consistently, then congratulations. <laughs> You're at, by default, you'll be ahead of about 98% of the population. It really is that lopsided. I don't know why it's that lopsided, but it is. I guess it's a culture problem. We debate that all day long. So that's it, my friends. That's it. I'm going to scroll up now and look at the comments. And by the way, if you like this, my website is TomBurkenmeyer.com. TomBurkenmeyer.com. You can 
find thousands of other things to do with health, healing, happiness, mindset, freedom, and so forth. But just a bunch of people saying hi, hi back to you. My necklaces, Barbara, you love my necklaces. Well, thank you. I have a friend, Desera, on here who makes these. Uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. She collects the conch shells. She carves them up and does her thing. It's, I love these things. You can't find them anywhere, which, you know, there's a lot of sentimental value to that, and I'm a sentimental fool. Hi, Annette. Nice to see you. Share this with your friends, everyone, if you think these ideas are great. They are great ideas. Hi, Kamara. Hi, Linda. Uh, what we say to ourselves becomes our reality soon enough. Yeah, that's true. Kamara. Michelle, hi. Kamara, you said your bills are paid. That's cool. I, I don't know when you said, said that, so I don't have any context for your comment about your bills being paid. If you could give me some context, maybe I can talk about that. Hi, Christine. Truth bombs. Cool. I'm glad I could drop some truth bombs. Linda, never stop learning. Experience is so much more valuable than money, especially if you are, if you are young. Linda, I will respectfully, I don't know if it's a disagreement so much as an expansion on what you just said. You said never stop learning. With you on that, the next part, experience is so much more valuable than money, especially if you are young. Um, I think experience is valuable no matter what age you are, and I think as you get older, naturally you're going to have more experiences, provided that you're out there living life, right? I think so. And experience uh, being more valuable than money, they kind of, they can go hand in hand, I think. Hi, Jesse. You have a great day as well, Kamara. Disability check, you got a lot of free time. Let me talk a little bit about that. So there's some people that have disability checks and any form of government subsidy, and they're fine. They're happy. They're content with how they are. And that's totally cool. But then there's a, another fragmentation of that culture living on disability where it's like, this sucks. I mean, sure, I'm grateful. I got maybe the basics covered, barely, but this sucks. And they're going to take away my disability if I go out there and try to do anything for myself. So that really sucks because I really want to go out there and do stuff for myself, but I don't want to lose my disability. So let me address that real quick because Camara, you're probably not the only one. So here's the ultimate solution for that. You start a business, a home business, say a network marketing thing or something along those lines. Make sure it's leveraged income. Otherwise you're going to screw yourself and you're still just as controlled and manipulated by the dollar as you ever were. That's why I suggest network marketing because it's leveraged income, it's passive, it's, it's residual, and it unshackles you from the dollar. So let's say you join something like that, like a network marketing thing, and you build your own passive and residual income. You take every dollar that you're making with that business and you reinvest it back into itself. So now the business is going to grow more quickly and you're not claiming any additional income. Therefore, you do not mess with your benefits, your subsidies, your disability checks, whatever that you're on because you're not claiming any income. See, when you become a business owner, you put the tax laws in your favor. If you only have a job, taxes are penalizing you. The harder that you work, the more money you make, the more you're penalized for it with a job. When you become a business owner, it flips itself over. It's 180. Now you can control your taxes and you control all of that. So Camara and anybody else watching this that's listening to this, if you're worried about losing your disability checks or any government subsidies, um, you simply start a business of leveraged income, not ordinary earned income like most people do. It's so stupid. But like a network marketing thing where it's all leveraged income and you reinvest every dollar you make back into itself. And then you don't claim any income, so your disability is just fine. It won't be messed with and your business will grow faster. And then here's how it ends. Let's say you keep in reinvent. Let's say you know you got into a network marketing gig, and the first year you make I don't know twenty thousand dollars. I don't know. You've put twenty thousand back into it, so you canceled it out. You got an income of zero, so your disability checks will keep keep coming in just fine. Let's say the next year it's fifty thousand dollars. Okay, pretty cool. But you're going to keep reinvest. So the next year you put fifty thousand back in every dollar. Let's say the next year, I don't know, it's a hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and now you're like you know what, I don't need my disability anymore. 
or let's just get ridiculous with it. Let's say you keep building it up because it's residual, it's passive, it's leveraged money, um, and you build it up to where you're making a million dollars a year. I mean, just for a, a ridiculous example, so you get the point. And now you're like, okay, piss on my disability checks. I'm making a million dollars a year, I don't need it. And now you can start taking out distributions. So bottom line, you reinvest every dollar back into itself so that you don't lose your disability. And then at some point as it builds, when you're comfortable, you decide, okay, I can take out distributions now and I don't need my disability checks anymore. And that number could be whatever you want it to be, 50,000, 100,000, a million, whatever you want it to be. That is the ultimate solution. The tax code incentivizes you to uh, you know, get rid of your disability checks, your government help. But what do most people do that's on you know, assisted living benefits, Medicare, Medicaid, disability checks? They're thinking to themselves, I can't go out there and make any money because I'll mess with my disability check. That just means that you don't understand how taxes work. You're incentivized in the tax code to get out of disability. You see it as a, maybe not you personally, but most people on disability see it as a, as, a, as a trap, right? It's like, I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't. No, that just means you don't understand the tax law. You're incentivized to get out of it, not to stay there. You're incentivized to get out of it by building a leveraged income like you would get from a network marketing company where you got passive and residual working in your favor. And so you, you'll never mess with your disability checks that way until you're ready because you're making so much money with it that you don't need your disability anymore. And now you're free. I hope that makes sense. Does it, Camaro? Because that's a big one. And by the way, people on disability, you're not the only ones that think that way. People with a job think that way too. It's crazy. It's a terrible narrative that people have bought into and it keeps them obedient and controlled and manipulated through the dependency of money to pay their bills. But you know what doesn't keep people controlled and manipulated through the dependency of money to pay bills? Maybe a desire for learning outside of the box that you currently occupy. <laughs> learning about passive and residual money and being a business owner and starting a network marketing company. Camara, um, you said agreed unless they catch you. Yes, it does. Okay, Camara, then everything I just said went over your head. Not, I don't say that to sound mean or anything like that, but if that's your response to what I just told you, or you agree unless they catch you, then it does. Okay, I'm gonna try one more time. I don't say that to be mean, Camara. Okay, this is totally legal and legit. If you're earning, if you get disability from the government, and you go and you start your own business and you start making money with that business, you reinvest every dollar you make back into that business. You report it to the IRS on your tax forms. So it's legit. So what do you mean if they catch you? Uh, they're they're going to know about it. It's 100% transparency. Um, yeah, that, that's another thing. People think that if you permanently reduce your taxes uh, by default, uh, it's, oh, it's got to be illegal. No, it's in the tax. The, okay, 99.9% .9 of the entire tax code is telling you how to reduce your taxes on a permanent basis. Only 0.1% tells you how to increase it, and that's basically just get a job. The rest of it is telling you the opposite of getting a job so you can permanently reduce your taxes. So that's what the incentive is for. It's nothing illegal. It's nothing that if you get caught, you're going to get busted over. It's uh, no, they want you to do it. So Camara, I don't know what you, what, what you meant by agreed unless they catch me, catch you. Like, okay, so that's all of my ranting. And I think I got caught up on the comments too. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this video unless anybody else has anything you wanna add or a question you have or something you want me to put a magnifying glass on. Just let me know. This is your moment. Otherwise, in just a couple seconds, I'm gonna end this video, okay? Time for one more sip of wine. I have hardly touched this at all. All right, then that's going to conclude it. It looks like nobody else has anything to say. I want to thank everybody who was not a bump in a log, but everyone that was participating in this. Thank you very much. And to all of you bumps in a log, well, 
there will be a next time I'll do another video soon. You can redeem yourself then. Bye for now, everyone.